Good evening. evening. Welcome to Epiphany Lutheran Church on this fifth weekend of Easter. I'm Pastor Chris. We're also delighted to have our graduate recognition weekend. This is the weekend when we pray God's blessing on uh, those members of our congregation who are graduating from high school and college, and uh, we'll be able to pray for them a little bit later on. I do want to let you know that we're back not, not only to the Lutheran aerobics of sit, stand, sit, stand, sit, stand, but also the, uh, the Lutheran juggling act. So we, we got the hymnals back in the rows, and we'll be using those for the hymns tonight. Um, our opening hymn is hymn number 811 in the Burgundy hymnal next to the Burgundy Bible. Don't get them mixed up. Hymn 811, please stand. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As penitent people, we ask God for his mercy and grace. Humble yourselves then before God, confess your sins to him, and implore his forgiveness. 
O Almighty God, most merciful Father, I, a repentant sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you. I make sure I am a sinful Christian. In thought, word, and deed, I have continually transgressed your law. For this I justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of sufferings and death and your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a penitent and contrite of me. Forgive me all my sins and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit that I may God be gracious to you and strengthen your faith. As you believe, so let it be. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, come forth and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Risen and ascended Lord, you are the vine, and we are the branches. Apart from you, there is no life. By baptism, you have granted us into your gracious life. Cause your word to abide in us, and make us fruitful to the glory of your Father, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Reading is found in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And when he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, 
queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasures. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated, seated in his chariot. And he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb before his shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say these things, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azutus, and he passed. And as he passed through, he preached the gospel to the, all the towns, until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 150, the very last in the Psalter. And we pray responsibly and with great joy. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty house. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent grace. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud, flashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The epistle is found in 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, and chapters 12 through 21. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false spirits have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak for, from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit and truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, and not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. 
St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We invite the children for the children's message. Hello, children of God. What, let's see, I've got some things here. I want to see what you can identify. Do you know what these are? Sometimes you put them. Raisins, yes, these are raisins. Do you like raisins? I've learned not a lot of people really like raisins, unless they're in cookies or something. I think raisins aren't that bad. Where do raisins come from? You don't know where raisins come from? Raisins actually, believe it or not, these little dry, shriveled up guys, once upon a time, were grapes. Did you know that? Mind blown. So raisins were actually, actually come from grapes. And they get all dried out and then they turn into raisins. Now, here's another question. Where do grapes come from? Kind of, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's like a tree. They actually grow on what's called vines. So it's, it's sort of kind of like a tree. It's like a tree that then has these vines, and attached to the vines are branches, and attached to the branches are the grapes. So it kind of, you can see there's, there's like a, a trunk sort of like a tree. And then the vine comes off of that. And the vine is what provides all of the nutrition for the branches. So the branches are attached to this vine, and that gives, the, that gives them all of the, the water and the food that they need in order to grow these delicious grapes. Now, sometimes a branch might kind of fall off of the vine and get dried up. Do you think this kind of a branch is going to grow anything? No, it's definitely not. This is a pretty done and dead branch, and it's not going to be able to produce anything. If you plant this in the ground, it's not going to sprout up and be a grapevine, because it's, it's just down there. Yeah, it's just dead. Now, why are we talking about grapes? Because Jesus talked about grapes. Jesus often used these cultivation, agriculture kind of analogies because it made sense to the people then. There were a lot of people who were farmers and grew things. And so Jesus told his disciples that he was like a vine. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. So he was just telling the disciples, abide in me and you'll be okay. What that means is that he was saying he's the source of of everything. He is the source of all life, and he wanted the disciples, and also he's talking to us, to say, stick with me, stay connected to me, and I will give you what you need. Jesus was saying, if you stay connected to him, the vine, like the branches would stay connected to the vine, then you'll be able to have what you need, that he'll provide, like we talked last week about providing, that he'll provide 
all the things that we need. And he also said that you'll be able to produce fruit. Now, obviously, we're not going to grow grapes out of our noses. That would be a little bit weird. But the fruit that comes when we are connected to Jesus is what we call the fruit of the Spirit. Things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Those are things that will bless us and bless other people. Now, how do you think that we would stay connected to Jesus? What does that mean? That we what? It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like we're on the branch and we're the grape, and we can, we're like the grapes that hang on to the branch. We don't want to get all dried up like shriveled raisins. But we can do that when we do things like when we pray and when we read the Bible and when we come to church. Those are ways that we can stay connected to Jesus, the vine. And when we are connected to him, we can be sure that he will take care of us because we don't make our own fruit. He does it through us. So Jesus does the work and takes care of us and produces these wonderful things through us. So we can be grateful or maybe we can be grateful that he takes care of us and gives us what we need and that we can stay connected to him. So why don't we say a prayer and thank God for that. Dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus, the true vine. Help us stay connected to him and connected to your love. Thank you for giving us all we need and for producing good fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me get a fruit. I don't know where the fruit's next went. Turn to hymn 955. It's a short one, one verse. So please stand as we sing together. <coughs> mercy and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Abide in me and I in you, says Jesus, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Abide. What a strange commandment. Or is it an invitation? Ten times in John 15, Jesus says to abide. Abide, 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 abide. And in case you didn't get the ninth time, abide. But what does it mean to abide in Jesus? In the infamous cult classic film, The Big Lebowski, Jeff Bridges portrays the dude an incurable slacker who drinks and smokes and goes to bowling alleys, and that's about it. And at one point, somebody asks what the dude does all day, and the answer is, the dude abides. The dude abides. But I don't think that's what Jesus has in mind in our gospel reading. Abide is a hugely significant word in the New Testament. It occurs 112 times, and more than half of them are in the writings of John in his gospel and in his letters. To abide means to remain. It means to stick it out, to stick together and remain connected. 
The theological dictionary of the New Testament says that God abides in believers, as we heard in our epistle today, and believers in God. And here again, the relationship of salvation is both enduring and present. Something that abides is here and it remains. If it abides, it doesn't come and go. In fact, it doesn't go anywhere. It just stays put. Jesus says that he wants us to abide in him, that he wants us to remain connected to him. He wants to be with you. He wants to stay with you forever. And he doesn't come and go. He's not going anywhere. You can rely and depend upon Jesus to do what he says and to be who he promises to be. He wants to abide in you. And he earnestly seeks that you should abide in him. Chad Bird is a writer who blogs a lot about theology. And on a recent Facebook post, he writes, to abide in Christ is to stay where he has put us. I like that, to stay where he has put us, in his body by baptism, in his church by the word, in his spirit by the gospel, and any other place is death and darkness. Abiding in Jesus means to show up and remain where he promises to be, in his word, in the water of baptism, in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, In the fellowship of the saints, for where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is, right in the midst of them. Jesus Christ is the true vine. And because he died and rose again, he gives eternal life to everyone who abides in his love and in his word. He wants us to find our life in him, just as the branch finds its life in the vine. Without connection, the the branch cannot fulfill its purpose of producing fruit. It dies, it falls off, or it gets cut off and burned. But Jesus wants us to thrive. And when we abide in his word, in his love, in his spirit, his life flows freely through us like sap in the vine or blood in the body. Everything depends upon being connected to Jesus. And yet, as crazy as it sounds, our sinful nature seeks separation, not connection. Sin causes us to rebel against God's commands, and then it causes separation from him. We don't want to remain in the vine because we think too highly of ourselves. We think that we are responsible for the fruit. We think that we are the ones who get things done and make miracles happen. We want to break away from the vine and go our wind-tossed way, seeking out adventures and endeavors that lead only to death. Because we want the glory and the credit for everything good in our life. We forget, ignore, or resent the reality that it all comes from Christ. When we try to live apart from Jesus, we do not stay in the places where he promises to be. His word, his sacraments, his church. We read the Bible when we can fit it in. But our calendars are full and our to-do lists are long, and rarely do we carve out that quiet time for devotion. Instead of a day born out of prayer, we only pray to God as a matter of last resort when things hit the fan. We fail to show up for public worship because we have better, more exciting things to do. And why do we need to go to church anymore anyway? I mean, now that the pandemic came and revolutionized the world, we can just stay at home and watch on YouTube until we die. (laughs) But watching on YouTube and coming and actually participating in the worship are two very different things. I know that most of you don't sing along when you watch at home, and you can't receive the Lord's Supper through a television screen. I know that some of my brother pastors in other districts have done some weird things to try to get around that, but we can talk about that a different day. But let's just say that consecrating your own elements at home or holding them up to the TV for a blessing is probably not what Jesus has in mind for abiding in him. 
when we don't want to avail ourselves to receive God's word and sacraments and stay where he puts us, we cut ourselves off from our life source. And then we wither and we die. We live in the illusion that we're self-sufficient, that we are the heroes of our own stories, that we make things happen. But Jesus tells us otherwise. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Not a little bit or quite a bit or a fair amount or a passing the grade kind of amount. No, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Zero, zilch, zip, nada. We accomplish nothing. We bear no fruit because a branch by itself does nothing. It can't produce grapes. And without the water and the nutrients from the vine, it has no life and it dies. If our life is not found in Christ, then even worse than being unfruitful, we will become fuel for the fire. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Jesus doesn't specify here exactly what the fire represents. But when you read the rest of his parables, I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm not a farmer. I don't know anything about growing grapes. I'm just a kid from the city who enjoys the occasional glass of wine. Although once I attended a wedding reception that was at a, a vineyard in Iowa, of all places, and it was just beautiful. But I know enough about grapevines and plants to know this. I don't want to die. I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive. I want to enjoy life to the full with everything that Jesus wants for me, the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation, and to bear abundant fruit for him and his kingdom. I want an abundant life, life to the full, and the only place where I will ever find that, the only place where I can have that refreshment and fulfillment is in Jesus Christ. Now, as wonderful as they may be, our relationships with other people, and our work, our interests, our hobbies, they will never be the source of meaning and purpose in life. We find our life in Jesus. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my life. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And our true life is found only in the life of him who died and now lives again. We need to stay connected to Jesus. Abide in Jesus. Abide in his word and his love because he abides in you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. we stand and make confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our tithes and our offerings to the Lord.
prayer. In our prayers today, we give thanks to God and rejoice that Deb Reimnitz, the sister of Faith and Ardith, has, uh, her cancer is gone. She is, um, she's healed. She is um, a new woman, and no more cancer treatments are planned in her future at this time. So we rejoice, we give thanks to God for his wonderful gift, um, his gift of healing. Miracles do happen. I think I, I think somebody talked about that recently. So we give thanks to God. He, he does, he gets things done. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who receive the benevolent hand of God's mercy, in his provision, in the fruit that he gives to us from the earth, and in the healing that he grants us by the life-giving spirit, the creator and giver of life. We rejoice, O God, with Deb Reimnitz, and we pray, O God, that her healing would be a testimony to others of your love and your care for your people and for your creation. Let us pray to the Lord. For all God's people, that as branches of the vine, all sin and dead works would be pruned and cut off from them, and that drawing life from the sun, they would continually produce the fruits of faith and good works. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church on earth, that she would be protected from all false teaching and the spirit of the Antichrist. And so always confess Christ come in the flesh and remain faithful to him, our only true God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all teachers and catechumens, that they would be guided in God's word and ever increase in understanding, faith, and love for Christ. The lamb led to the slaughter in our place and risen from the dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our president and all in authority, that they may serve honorably and in accord with God's good order, let us pray to the Lord. For all who bear the cross in suffering and affliction, especially Connie, Jack, Evelyn, Gloria, Richard, Jerry, Estelle, Chandel, Anna, Sue, Christina, David, Dorothy, Richard, Jan, Henry, Keith, Barb, Diane, Peter, Bob, Valerie, Vigil, Emma, Arthur, John, Janessa, Levi, Jake, and Stuart, that they would ever look to the Lord and so fix their hearts where true joy is found, let us pray to the Lord. For those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially Julie, Audrey, Jerry, Leanne, Marie, Richard, Annette, Andriana, Anna, Stephanie, Katie, Jonathan and Jennifer, and Larry and Mimi, that their joy would be our joy and they would be blessed by another year of God's providence and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Hear and answer our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ. And your saints shall bless you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. On this weekend, we recognize our graduates. Unfortunately, I don't have the insert with their names. Somebody, can somebody give me theirs? They're not on the printer still, I hope. No, no, they're out there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. There are five people graduating from uh, high school and college and graduate school 
also this year, connected with our congregation. Um, Lois Coffrin from Douglas County School District, uh, Levi Garkey, uh, also Lincoln Rychecki, his parents are here tonight, from graduating from, uh, from Boulder with a degree in computer science, and Elena Mutterspa, who is graduating from CSU with um, a degree in biomedical science and chemistry. Also, Alyssa Bartle, um, some of you may remember Alyssa. She uh, is the daughter of Karen Hood, the granddaughter of Marsha and Pat Hood. Um, she was confirmed here like in 2004 and a long time ago. Anyways, she is uh, graduating with a degree in speech pathology, a master's degree, and uh, will be working with people in schools and hospitals with their speech issues. And so uh, we want to lift up these folks and all graduates to our Lord in prayer at this time. Please stand. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, your word teaches that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. As the creator of all things, you are the source of all true knowledge. Therefore, we ask you to bless all graduates with godly wisdom, strength of character, and zeal for service to nation, community, church, and family. Especially, we pray today for Lois, Levi, Lincoln, Elena, and Alyssa. Empower and equip all graduates by your Holy Spirit and for Alyssa. Empower and equip all graduates by your Holy Spirit to use their gifts and talents to your glory and the benefit of their neighbor. Reveal the plans you have for them, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give them a future and a hope. Above all, grant them your grace. We ask this and all things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. First announcement that I would like to share with you is that um, we have a New worship service coming up in a couple weeks on Thursday night, May 13th, for the Ascension of our Lord. Um, Ascension, Jesus' Ascension took place 40 days after Easter and 10 days before Pentecost. And that's where uh, it is as a liturgical occasion as well, as we trace the, the life of Jesus in real time during Holy Week and during those great 50 days from Easter to Pentecost. Um, in the past, I've just sort of have uh, translated it to Sunday, but technically Ascension is not a movable feast, and so I got excited this year and decided that, uh, you know, since last year we couldn't be in church a lot together, we'll just be in church more often together this year. Anyways, I'm trying to be funny, but it's, it's a really special occasion um, in the life of Jesus, and we'll talk in that service about the meaning and significance of why Ascension matters for us. Why, we say it in the creed, but it's not just a, a footnote. It's an important event, and we'll uh, worship and celebrate together. I'd also like to invite people to come this coming Saturday morning, May 8th, a week from today, for the Orphan Grain Train Container Load, um, which is going to be going on at 9 o'clock. Um, this container is headed for the Republic of Georgia, which is not where Atlanta is, but where Tbilisi is, and a uh, former Soviet republic. And um, many hands make light work. We've said that before, um, and hope that uh, the folks can come. You know, the Saturday containers, they cost more money, but they uh, hopefully draw a bigger crowd to load because folks that work can be there. So um, let's try to make it worth Gary's while for, for Orphan Grain Train having to pay a little more for that. Okay. Kristen Schmidt has some updates and some announcements as well. So a few things coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, this Thursday, May the 6th, is the National Day of Prayer. 
and we're going to have the sanctuary open and available for anyone to come and just kind of a free as you would care to come pray about anything, take time to um, hang out in the sanctuary as long as you'd like to. That'll be from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock that it's going to be open. Um, then on Saturday, the same morning as the Orphan Grain Train load, if you're not loading boxes and you would like to be certified in CPR, we do have our CPR and first aid course that's going to be held from 8.30 to 12.30. There's still some availability on that sign-up list. Um, and it's something we hope to do again as well. So if you don't make it this time, maybe the next course will work out with your schedule. Um, then the following Saturday is the shred -a -thon, the shred event fundraiser for VBS. So bring all of your paper and electronic goods that need recycled. Um, and we'll take care of those. That will be 8 to 11 a.m. Um, and then the next Sunday is Confirmation Sunday. So we'll have, we won't have regular Sunday school for adults. It'll be the faith expressions projects for, that the students have been preparing. And then in the 11 a.m. service, they will be confirmed, followed by cake. Um, so hope that all goes well. Thank you. So basically, if you don't want to miss anything at Epiphany, just be here every Saturday and Sunday for the next three weeks. We stand for our closing hymn, hymn number 703. <laughs>
morning, partners. Kristen Schmidt here with Epiphany Lutheran Church in Castle Rock, Colorado. We'd like to invite you all out for a rootin' tootin' rowdy Wild West Vacation Bible School. We'll be learning what it means to be outlaws for God. Our VBS program is open to all cowpokes ages three years old and potty trained through fifth grade. And it'll be held June 14th through 18th from 9 a.m. to noon on campus at Epiphany. We'll feature galloping games, chuck wagon crafts, water and hole snacks, hoedown music, and frontier fun. Most importantly, we'll be exploring God's Word to learn about some real biblical outlaws. So if you're ready for a summer adventure, then saddle on up and join us. Sign-ups are available online through the link below or our church website. Better skedaddle and get your name on that list. This is a program you won't want to miss. And remember, never squat with your spurs on. Time to move them out now. Yeehaw!